If you ever consider getting a government job, the chances are you ask somebody for advice. The problem with this is that there's a lot of bad advice floating around out there, so let's address it. The first piece of bad advice is go ahead and take a lower GS grade so you can get your foot in the door. So you're asking someone to essentially undervalue themselves and take less money in the short term. If you have 10, 15, 20 years of experience, what are you doing taking a GS5 or a GS6 or a GS7? You do not need to do that. The long-term effect of you making this decision to come in at a lower GS grade, it's gonna impact you and your family. You're gonna be making tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars less over a long time horizon. There's so much money that you're missing out on. And because you're buying into this idea that you have to start all over again, because maybe you're in the private sector, maybe you're in the military, and now someone has this thought stuck in your head that you cannot be paid what you're worth anymore. I don't know where that idea comes from. You have value, you have skills and experiences, you should be paid what you're worth, and you can. Let's just say that there's a guy that's eligible with his experience, he's eligible for a GS-12, but his buddy says, hey, just take whatever you can get, so he takes a GS-7. What's the difference between a seven and a GS-12? What's that difference? Starting out on day one, what's the difference? It's $40,000. That's the difference between a GS-12 step one and a GS-7 step one. So for the first year, you're out 40,000. Then let's say you stay there two or three years. After three years, that's over a $150,000 difference. Why? Why did this happen? Because you took some bad advice, that's why. Start figuring out what your experience is actually worth and what is the fair value in salary you should be expected. What type of compensation would be fair for you? Do not react out of a sense of desperation and just take anything. Now, if you're in a position where you do not have any relevant experience, or let's say you're fresh out of college and you didn't volunteer, you don't have really much of any experience, in that case, I understand you're trying to come in at a low level. Same thing if you're in a very rural area and the jobs are just not there, and the only thing that you can take is the GS6 position at the SSA because the Social Security office is a few miles from your house. If you're in those two type of positions, I understand it. Next is somebody tells you to copy and paste the specialized experience from the job announcement into your resume and change the font to white. So <laughs> this is ridiculous and people have been saying it, so it needs to be addressed. Do not copy and paste anything from the job announcement to your resume. This is done usually because they think the computer is gonna pick it up, pick up on the words. Well, the thing is the computer might scan your resume, but it still has to go through an actual person. An actual human resource specialist has to look at it. So it's not gonna do any good. It's not gonna show that you have relevant experience. It's not just a computer that's looking at your resume. And if the human resource specialist catches it, then it shows that you're being deceptive. You're trying to deceive, you're using trickery in order to get the job interview. Nobody wants to hire a candidate like that. With the job announcement, you do want to pay special attention to the specialized experience portion, but you want to use those words in your resume. So the verb, whatever the verbs are, that's what they're looking. They're looking for a candidate that can do that. So make sure that if you have another verb in there, you might want to use a synonym so it matches up, but you do not want to do a complete copy and paste job. That's not gonna work out. Next is when people say, make your resume as long as possible. Make it 10, 15 pages. You do not, when you're looking at a federal resume, I would not have a number in mind for pages. People ask me, how long should a resume be? And usually I say between four and six pages. Something around there usually works if you have about 10 years of experience or so. People have been hired in the government for a GS9 with a two page resume. That's all it takes a lot of the times. Other times, it makes sense that you have more pages. But at the end of the day, the experience in there needs to be relevant. Do not put the time that you were at Taco Bell in the 1990s. I look at resumes that have experience from the 90s. Usually that experience from 1996, that's irrelevant. The, the programs, the software, the systems that were being used in the 90s, they're not using it in the 2020s. We're not using those same programs. Same thing with education. Highlight the courses that are relevant to the position. Don't just put bachelor degree, bachelor in criminal justice, but maybe you took classes in there that relate to the job. Emphasize the relevant coursework. And keep in mind that certain federal agencies have also made the determination 
they're not gonna review your resume if it's, if it's longer than a certain length. So this is one of the reasons why it's so important to read that job announcement because you will see a lot of times in the job announcement, it says anything past page six will not be considered or anything past page five. So then you know, if you have a 10 page resume, you're gonna have to condense it if you want to be eligible and compete for that job announcement. Overall, for, for the majority of people, I would say just focus on your last 10 years of experience. You don't have to go all the way back. Next, some people actually say, hide your employment gap or make something up. In the federal government, in the federal hiring process, the employment gap is not an issue. The only thing that's an issue is, does this candidate have relevant experience? How much experience do they have? If you, if you haven't worked in the last two or three years, that's fine. Let's say you have 10 years of work experience and you haven't worked in the last few years. HR is gonna focus on the experience that you have and find out how relevant it is. If you're concerned about that, you can easily put down some volunteer experience. Have you been volunteering at your church or at your community or maybe you're at the school, the PTA, have you been volunteering there? You can list that experience and that's not gonna be a big deal, but do not get overly concerned about your gap. Give yourself an opportunity by strengthening your resume and applying for the opportunities that you know that you're eligible for. There are several military spouses that had experience with the FRG, which is the Family Readiness Group. They had experience there for a couple of years. They used that experience in order to get a government job. You can do that. The next piece of bad advice is go get a master's degree. If you're in a situation where you don't have a job, you're struggling to find a job, you're unemployed, one of the worst things that you can do in your life is go ahead and volunteer to take on more debt. To go ahead and get $100,000 or more in debt. You can make yourself marketable without being affiliated with a university curriculum. You do not need to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a graduate degree. Not for most of these jobs. The majority of the jobs in the government, they don't even require college. They need experience. You're better off volunteering and getting that experience and applying than you are of, let me just take a break and spend 12 to 18 months pursuing graduate level courses. I wouldn't do that. In the government, you will come across GS-13s, GS-14s, and GS-15s with no degree, absolutely no college degree. And there you are as a GS-7 with two master's degrees trying to figure out where it all went wrong. Why is your boss's boss have no degree and you have multiple degrees? It's not a degree game. You're not in this game for degrees. Degree is great. If you want to self-develop yourself, go ahead and do that. If you feel good about it and you want to set a good example for the members of your family and friends, go ahead and do that. But do not expect guarantee employment with degrees. Now, obviously, if your profession demands it, if you're going to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, and you need a degree, that's a whole nother story. It's a whole nother conversation. I'm addressing this message to individuals that are struggling finding employment. And we're talking about 65% of the jobs that do not even require a degree. All right, so if you're still looking for a government job, maybe you wanna know what agency you need to focus on. Which ones are the best, which ones are the worst? If you wanna know that list, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.